my name is Inge, coming to you from Inge's Knitting Lab in Denmark. In these knitting podcasts, I talk about my combined passion for knitting and science. I love to dive deep and figure out the things, the science, the chemistry, the physics, the, the techniques, um, the constructions. Yeah, everything behind the knitting uh, before you sit with your lovely uh, yarn in your hands knitting and while and after. Uh, however, today no deep dives because I'm so happy and thrilled to announce that I've now released my first sweater pattern and it is this tree trunk sweater I'm wearing right now using uh, uh, the Viking Eco Highland wool, but more about that later. Hopefully you saw uh, some of the models in the intro and uh, liked it. Uh, I have uh, released it on Ravelry. I will link it below. And uh, right now, uh, as part of this release uh, party for me, uh, I'm giving 20% off of the pattern. If you have seen me on Instagram, I wrote uh, the next uh, 48 hours but as I've been a bit delayed in making this video, I will now prolong the time until Sunday, uh, end of Pacific time. And it is, uh, let me see in my notes, it's May 26. So you can still um, reach uh, the coupon code here, which is tree trunk 20. Yeah, um, about the sweater. But before we do so, I would really like to give a big, big thank you and a hug, a, big, a virtual hug to everybody uh, who has helped me realize my dream here and make this happen. So first of all, a huge thanks to all test knitters for all of your uh, ideas and of improvements, chipping in with your knitting skills, your questions your eye for the detail and everything uh, you have done for me here uh, including providing patience so that's lovely i've learned so much and it's been quite a ride uh, and now we are here with a pattern included with all your input thank you so much and um, Next, a big thanks to family and friends who have kindly <laughs> uh, provided their bodies for me to try on different options uh, so that I have been able to make a sweater uh, with options for many different body types. You can see here on the poster, this was my inspiration to be able to make this um, a sweater design uh, hoping to be classic and timeless and fitting everybody so now i'm releasing the female edition but soon also the male edition will be released and the children's edition so it's kind of i call it the family sweater now so you can all have one if you want <laughs> so uh, yeah um yes What's up? Yeah, let me just uh, talk about some of the very important uh, learnings. Uh, if you have seen more of my episodes, you heard me. Uh, I had to crack the nut about the construction of the European uh, shoulder design. So once that was in place and the set in bell sleeve and how to, and how much and, and what not to do the increases, test knitters uh, started the, the process. And um, I had designed this sweater with uh, this uh, natural undyed wool because I have had this face being very intrigued by yarns with, with no chemistry um, or as little chemistry as possible. So this uh, undyed natural wool, non-superwash, 100% merino-like wool, uh, lovely, it was designed with this wool. And uh, I also, during the designer process, used this blue one uh, and exactly we had, I had the same gauge of 20 stitches times 29 rows um, after blocking. So all good, all good. But of course, testers use many different colors and I also started using different colors myself. So you can see a palette of different colors that I have in stock here. So 
behind here is all the natural ones and I have many blue ones and red and green and yeah many different types uh, and uh, one of the testers used this lovely burnt orange and uh, we had a bit of trouble getting gauge so I uh, along with her test knitting I also um, started up uh, my own uh, testing of different colors and and uh, what was uh, not expected from me I guess out of ignorance is that uh, when you treat a wool it is a delicate process and you may change the characteristics and the properties of the natural undyed wool a bit and this is uh, what happens here so when we have this uh, natural untreated one, let me show you, um, which give the very predictable gauge. When you use this one, or I could show you another one, you will see that actually, can you see it? Maybe on the wrong side, when I compare that it is wider. So it also uh, shrinks a bit, just like wool, a couple of rows after blocking but it gets wider. It kind of loses a bit of its elasticity, elast sorry, elasticity. And uh, that's what happens. But a challenge is there to be solved, right? So uh, I have cracked a nut on how, how to solve this. So please, if you do this sweater um, and want a lovely color, no problem at all. Just watch uh, at least two of my tutorials, one with the nature of the wool and the other one with gauging tips. And there you will learn how to do it and how to tackle this problem. And people would call me a thorough person. So I have tested a lot so that I can see if things and results are reproducible and uh, I can uh, use this yarn in my uh, pattern. Because some might say, why, well, why don't you use a yarn that is uh, all over predictable? And yeah, I could, but I really love this yarn and I didn't want to give it up because of this. Because you know what? Uh, Viking is offering both the undyed and the dyed in the same base. I guess if you uh, choose another brand with a base with both dyed and undyed colors, you would experience the same if you dive deep and uh, maybe sometimes us knitters you know when things doesn't go as we plan or as is in the pattern we often put it on ourselves to say maybe i didn't do the gauging right or i did something wrong or it's me or i was it wrong or what did i do wrong we take it in but uh, you know yeah now we are here, I have tested it, and you're not wrong if you cannot get gauge with one of the uh, uh, dyes, but no problem, we solve it in, in the pattern. Okay, so uh, that was about the yarn. So what next, what next? Yeah, you will see, uh, um, I can uh, show you here on a poster that I'm now preparing uh, a lot of tutorials and I will divide them into two parts. So part one is doing uh, the upper body until the underarm cast on uh, and the challenge is here and uh, yeah if you are an experienced knitter uh, maybe you don't need them. If you're a beginner knitter uh, you can maybe benefit. I've tried to make these videos to cover the whole range of new beginner knitters and experienced knitters so you can pick what you need and fast forward what you don't need. But uh, common for all the videos, you can expect that uh, perhaps uh, not just uh, showing, uh, but <laughs> I talk about the, yeah, the things uh, behind it and, and the whys and so on a bit also. Yes, so these were uh, the tutorials. So uh, what next, what next? Yeah. Um, did I? Yeah, I did. So I'm, I don't know if it's a common thing of designers that 
when you have now made the pattern ready and, and it is released, you are doing the aftermath or after activities with tutorials and, you know, practical stuff, your mind keeps working with new ideas. And, and uh, while doing this, I, my head is already in the next or, or the next again uh, sweater because uh, I have made uh, ready this one in the summer edition and I will soon be ready to uh, call for new test knitters of the summer edition. So let me just uh, get back to you when I'm wearing the summer edition. Just a moment. I'm back again and as you can see I also changed glasses because they have to match right. I'm such a, a in favor of many colors and matching colors and yeah colors make me happy. But here you go here's the uh, summer edition so it looks quite uh, much like the other one. The change is an I-cord edge here and I've made a scoop neckline. I'm considering whether or not this is actually a bit too scoopy. Could you say that? A bit too deep. So I will add four more rows or something. Um, and then it is with short sleeves and an I-cord edge. And as you can see, there are two different colors and it's because <laughs> I ran out of yarn and I thought, well, for this test piece, I don't need to, to uh, send or buy yet another with just one bullet skein to, to finalize. I just pick another color and I took this white one. So I would, for, for my eye, I, I will uh, change this to a white one as well. And then I've been playing a bit if I could add in some of the learnings from Cecil Hoivik. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but Cecil, she is crocheting here. So maybe I could make a bit of an edge, but maybe it doesn't fit this design. I don't know, but it, I have also an I-cord edge here. So much is the same. It's the same uh, design here on the shoulder. Um, but of course, as you use a uh, summer yarn, uh, uh, the stitch and the row count may be different and you do uh, new calculations and yeah, uh, stuff to do. Um, I'm using a yarn um, and I have more options actually. I'm testing right now. So uh, the, pos the composition of, of this yarn, this specific for this is called Gengarn Mild Mild. And it's 53% uh, cotton, 33% uh, viscose, and 14% uh, linen. Um, there's also an option for a Swedish yarn called Svarte Forret Cecilia, and also a base from Drops, uh, and a base from Sandness yarn Line. So there are more options, but I can tell you, even though it's exactly the same composition, they I guess they have treated the yarn and the process differently because the feel is not the same and it doesn't behave exactly the same after washing and wear. It's the small details, it's not a big thing, but it's, you know, a matter of taste and yeah, the feel and elasticity. So I will continue testing and I will um, let you know of my absolute favorite and um, so you can see that uh, even though I've been very busy with uh, the other uh, sweater, I have considered this as my spare time uh, knitting and doing something else, not uh, thinking too much. Um, so I am soon ready to uh, call for test knitters for this summer editions. And some have already signed up and yeah, that's wonderful. Uh, so if you're interested, just leave me a Gmail. Um, you have the link below in the description box and we can start already. Uh, the learning from the last process was that actually the step where you have to um, get the yarn and, and the initial phase being ready before you can even start swatching is actually taking uh, some time. So yeah, the 
sooner we can get started the better because now it's summer and I guess uh, we also want uh, this edition in play. Yeah, I guess as a new designer, I'm not up to speed with that you actually have to design the summer editions during winter time and the summer editions, no, the winter during summer and so on. Um, I'm, I'm off season, so to speak. But anyway, I guess it's okay because when you need to knit your winter sweater and you have a full-time job and family and, and friends and uh, a lot of activities, it may take some time to make a winter sweater. So yeah, that's how it is. Maybe I will get more tuned later if and, and when uh, this gets rolling. At least for now, I think this has been a fantastic uh, process. Uh, really uh, i have enjoyed it and learned so much and the collaboration with with the testers and family and friends to to do this it's yeah i don't have words it's 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 wow <laughs> and uh, uh, we celebrated here in family we had uh, a party on the 17th of may uh, it's Norway's national day and some of you may recall I've been talking about my mom she was a Norwegian Hi. when celebrating uh, on birthdays and so on we get uh, what we call lauke and uh, it's called lea cake I guess and in Norwegian it's a blood kake because uh, these buns are, are soft and, and squishy and it's with cream um, and and the strawberries or whatever fruit to make it a bit acidic and and yeah that's that's the baking chemistry but anyway <laughs> it's fun to make and and uh, yeah we celebrated and it was a great day and sun was out here in Denmark so all in all I am I'm riding on, on high curve right now and and I'm in the sky and so uh, yeah relieved and happy and and uh, I will take a couple of days off and uh, yeah, just enjoy being being ready with the design before the next releases. Because um, as I mentioned before, the male pattern and the children's pattern will always also be there soon. And uh, and uh, yeah, so I consider this kind of a family sweater. So there can be one for everyone and. The male version is also with different options for body sizes and uh, yeah, shapes. So I guess uh, this is all for now. And uh, hopefully I will see you back on the tutorials. Uh, otherwise, um, maybe there will be some weeks before an ordinary episode with the next I'm up to. I have many ideas in my head, but I try I have to focus right now, one thing uh, finished at a time before you get on to the next one. Maybe some of you can relate, uh, I don't know, but uh, uh, yeah, I guess I have to focus now on, on these uh, two designs and get them out of the door and then start uh, the next ride. So thank you so much for supporting me here and on Instagram and uh, all your lovely uh, comments and uh, and motivational uh, yeah, feedback, so great. So uh, continue knitting with uh, happiness and joy and uh, see you back. Bye bye, Roger Nova, hi hi. <laughs>